in different countries. We bless you and, and worship God and praise God and thank God for you. This is the day that the Lord has made. I see my main man, Ryan, is on with us. Christy Carpenter and so many others. Linda Barrett, praise God. We welcome you and bless God and praise him. This is the day that the Lord has made. The singer for singing, oh, happy day. Oh, happy day when Jesus washed my sins away. Do you remember the day when Jesus washed your sins away? Oh, what a happy day. Praise God that we're saved. We're saved. We're saved. We're in this world, but not of this world. We've got Jesus on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, happy day. I remember the day when Jesus washed my sins away. Ladies and gentlemen, that was a long time ago, July 20th, 1969. July 20th, 1969, when the Lord Jesus Christ entered into my life and gave me salvation and eternal life. I did not deserve it, and he loved me so much that he gave me eternal life. Praise God, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't a bit more care for Jesus at that time. I was living such a life of sin, but the Lord invaded my life because of his love. Love lifted me, picked me up and turned me around, changed my life, ladies and gentlemen. No more drugs, no more alcohol, no more this and that, <clears throat> no more of this. And I turned my life over to Jesus and I learned how to worship him. And I'm still learning, but I will not forget that day. That's a historic day also, because that's the day when man first walked on the moon. When man took that giant uh, step for mankind, the Lord took that step in my life and came and saved me. And I'm so glad, I'm so happy, I'm excited. I've been excited ever since then, ladies and gentlemen. I'm excited ever since that time. So I just praise God, praise God, praise God. Almost 50 years ago, and I'm still excited because of Jesus. I pray that you're excited about Jesus. I thank you for joining us wherever you are. I thank you that no matter where you are, you can join us and be a part of this service. This is going to be a life-changing service today. I say this is going to be a life-changing service today, so get ready. Those of you who are listening to the video, uh, get ready. Get ready. Get ready for a life-changing lesson because we're going to talk today, hallelujah, about how to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, how to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a life-changing, revolutionary service today, and it's all because of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So praise God. So I want you for the next 35 minutes, give me your attention. Let's give the Lord our attention, and let's just put our trust in him. Facebook family, make it a priority that for the next 35 minutes, you're going to be attentive to this word, and you're going to uh, uh, be obedient to the word and by faith receive this word. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to talk about how to get baptized in the Holy Ghost, how to get filled with the Holy Spirit. you talking about a life-changing experience. I remember when I was filled with the Holy Spirit back in 1976, ladies and gentlemen, I was a student in seminary. I was studying in seminary. I was studying with a whole lot of dry folks. I was dry myself, ladies and gentlemen, dry, just as dry as can be, and trying to serve God, trying to serve God, just as dry as I could be. And praise God, the Lord baptized me with the Holy Spirit. The Lord gave me instructions, told me what church to attend on a certain Sunday. He said, I don't want you going to your regular church. I was going to a Baptist church, and they were just, you know, going through the Baptist thing, but they didn't believe in the Holy Ghost. They talked about the Holy Ghost, but did not have the evidence of the indwelling. 
and I was hungry. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're hungry and thirsty for the Holy Spirit, you are on the right station today. You are on the right station. Stay right where you are. You are on the right station today. If you're hungering for the Holy Spirit, and I believe God, and I did what God did, told me to do, and my life has not been the same. My life, I was like a lot of you. I was scared of the Holy Ghost. I was, I had heard so much stuff in the church, and most of it was ignorant. Ignorance. There's so much ignorance taught in the church about the Holy Spirit, and 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 I was scared, and and also I was proud, like a lot of people today proud, don't want the Holy Ghost, don't need the Holy Ghost. They're trying to work things out themselves. Congregations trying to work things out. Individuals, you can't do it. Jesus has offered us the power. He said, be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be not drunk with wine in which is excess, but be filled with the Holy Ghost. That's Ephesians chapter 5, 18. So we're going to look at some scriptures we're going to look at the life of Jesus. We're going to look at his instructions. And then by faith, ladies and gentlemen, by faith, we're going to receive the baptism. And if you have been filled with the Holy Ghost already, expect to be filled again. Expect to be filled again. I seek to be filled with the Holy Spirit every day of my life. Every day for the rest of my life, I want to be filled again and again and again because I have discovered based on the scripture that the excellency of the power is of God and not of me. The scripture says we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power is of God and not of us. And so since I've learned that I am dependent upon the Holy Spirit, and when you learn that you're dependent upon the Holy Spirit, God has poured out enough He's given to every person the measure of the Holy Spirit, and he wants us to live by faith and let the Holy Spirit lead us. That takes the pressure off life. That takes the stress off life. That brings the church into harmony. That makes these dry bones connect with other dry bones and get filled and lubricated and get filled, and we connect with one another. And then with the Holy Spirit baptism, we can do what God has called us to do on this planet Earth. So I believe you're ready and I'm ready and I believe the Holy Spirit's ready. So let's just pray and invite him, invite him in our midst to guide us and teach us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you this day giving thanks giving thanks for who you are. Thank you that you loved us so much, Heavenly Father, that you gave us your only begotten Son, Jesus the Christ, who died on the cross for all mankind, all mankind, every nation, every individual. And we thank you that salvation is available to everyone. Not only salvation, but you have the Holy Ghost, that you have provided for us to live in every believer. And so, Lord God, we come to you today asking that you forgive us of our sins, cleanse us of all iniquity. Oh, God, we release our faith unto you to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And for those who've been filled before, fill them again and again. Help us guide us, Holy Spirit. Stand up in us, Holy Spirit. Let the word go forth. Help us to hear your word and receive what you have for us and help us to honor you, Holy Spirit. We love you, Lord Jesus. We bless you. We worship Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are our God. And so we commit ourselves to you today. Bless this online church. Bless the people. Bless the, uh, our friends on Facebook and the friends all over the world who are live with us and who are going to watch the video. Bless them. Make a difference in their lives. Lord, we praise you and we thank you. And, and we give you our attention. Work your mighty work, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Well, Ephesians 5, 18 says, And be not drunk with wine in which is excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. When the day of Pentecost came and all the 
<clears throat> disciples, there were about 120 people and their families, and uh, they were assembled in an upper room in Jerusalem. Why? Because Jesus told them to wait for the promise. Jesus told them before he ascended into heaven, he said, wait in, the, in Jerusalem, tarry in Jerusalem remain there because he had given them instructions to go into all the world and preach the gospel. He said, but before you go, you will need power. And so I want you, before you start off on your ministries, I want you to wait in Jerusalem until the promise comes. I've made a promise and the father is going to send you the Holy Spirit whom I promised. You remember Jesus said that I told you uh, before I was crucified, and this is the resurrected Jesus talking to the believers. He said, it is expedient that I go away, but if I go away, I will send you the comforter. He will guide you into all truth. And the comforter, the promised one, the power is what Jesus reminded his, sir, his disciples of just before he ascended into heaven. He said, tarry in Jerusalem. Ladies and gentlemen, he said, tarry in Jerusalem for the promise. And so they waited in Jerusalem 10 days after the resurrection of Jesus, 10 days. They stayed in Jerusalem for 10 more days. Some stayed later. Peter and James set up ministries in Jerusalem and others began traveling throughout the world. But for 10 days, they waited, they fellowship, they worship God, they praise God. Now, they did not praise God every moment for 10 days. They had to take time to eat, rest, and all this sort of thing. But for 10 days, they waited in Jerusalem. It pays to wait on the Lord and to obey him. God said for me today to preach today about how to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. God said for me to preach it, and he will do it. I'm going to teach you. He's going to do the work. All you've got to do is believe, hear, and believe. Facebook family, your life is going to change. Your life will change if you hear and believe. Ladies and gentlemen, it's going to be just plain and simple. The Lord said for me to teach it, and he will do the work. So if you put your faith out there and say, hey, I want this. I'm going to listen. I'm going to receive. Your life is going to change today. Praise God. And I put my trust in the Lord God. His word will not return to him void. And I know you're excited. And I thank God. I praise God. We've got truck drivers on the road listening uh, to this message while they're driving down the highways. We've got people uh, in airports. We've got people all over the place listening to this word. We've got people in villages in Africa. We've got people in throughout America waiting for this power, waiting for this uh, uh, experience of power from the Holy Ghost. God will not disappoint you. So let's look at some word. Let's uh, get our foundation of the word and then do what the Lord says do. And then everybody will get baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit and uh, your life will change. Ladies and gentlemen, we find in Matthew 3, uh, 15, Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. John saw Jesus coming into the Jordan River where John was baptizing people for the remission of sins. And John said to the crowd, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the uh, sins of the world. And Jesus came up to John and said, baptize me. And, and John said, no, you ought to baptize me. And Jesus said, no, suffer it to be, baptize me. Jesus was identifying with sinful man. Jesus, who knew no sin, wanted to be baptized. Uh, and, and this baptism is going to represent his crucifixion, his burial, and his resurrection from the dead. And so Jesus was baptized by John. And when Jesus came up out of the water, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says that the heavens opened and a dove came down from heaven and set on Jesus' shoulder, which re represented that he was filled with the Holy Ghost. The dove represented the Holy Spirit, and Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. 
ladies and gentlemen. Now we see Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit. God spoke from heaven and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And God filled him with the Holy Ghost. The Bible says Jesus was filled with the Holy Ghost and power and went about doing good. He healed the sick. He raised the dead. He uh, preached the word. He taught people. He uh, 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 broke bread and fish and, and fed thousands. He walked on water. He raised the dead. He did this under the anointing, the power of the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Jesus. And so Jesus tells his disciples, tarry in Jerusalem. I'm going to send the same power to you. The Holy Ghost is going to come and, and fill you so that you can do what I have called you to do. Ladies and gentlemen, as you're listening today, God has called you to ministry. He's called you to serve him. Some of your Sunday school teachers, some of your housewives, some of your secretaries, some of you don't have a job right now, but God has called you to be a witness for him. He wants you to witness for him. And the only way we can be powerful witnesses for the Lord is to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Now, listen to this. The moment you were saved, the Holy Ghost entered into you. The whole, it was the Holy Ghost who baptized you into the body of Christ. So the Holy Spirit lives in every believer. The scripture says you have a measure. You have a measure of the Holy Spirit. Every believer has the Holy Spirit on the inside. But Jesus says, be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, we use the term Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, the same. He's the same. He's the Holy Spirit. He's the Holy Ghost. Just different names. Uh, also known as the paraclete. Also the power. Also the third person of the Godhead. And Jesus says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will send the comforter, the comforter, the one to strengthen you, the one from whom you can draw strength, the one who will give you enough power and strength to fulfill your purpose on this planet. Ladies and gentlemen, the church has rejected the Holy Spirit for so long and people have taught so much erroneous stuff about the Holy Spirit that the church has been powerless in America and in other nations. And the church is like the valley of dry bones we've been preaching about for the last two weeks. The church is like the valley of dry bones, just laying around dead, having services, singing the same old songs, leave, coming in sick, leaving sick, coming in with an attitude, leaving with attitude. Why? Because the church has rejected the power of God. The church needs to repent you need to repent. I need to repent. We need to repent of walking in the proud spirit and thinking that we can do whatever we want to do without the power of God. Ladies and gentlemen, we are not of this world. We, we are in this world, but not of this world. We've been changed by the spirit of God to be followers of Jesus Christ. The moment I gave my life to Jesus on July 20th, 1969, I died, ladies and gentlemen. The moment you gave your life to Jesus, you died. The scripture says we were crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, we live, yet not us, but Christ lives in us. And the life that we live in this flesh, we live by the faith of the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. So the life that you're living now, because you have confessed Jesus, you're saying, I died to self. I died. I was crucified with Christ. Now I'm living. Now, in order to live for Christ, you must have Christ's power in you, Christ's wisdom, Christ's uh, uh, anointing. And that's the baptism of the Holy Spirit to lead you day by day. The only way we can be successful as Christians in these dark and evil days is to be baptized, be filled with the Holy Ghost. You may say, well, I got filled with the Holy Ghost back in 1950. Yes, well, this is 2018. And so there are some people still dwelling on that feeling they got 60 years ago. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why the church has lost its power. We need to be filled every day. We need to be so dependent 
on the Holy Spirit every day that we wake up every morning and say, Lord, fill me again. And, and we get this from Jesus. When we look at the life of Jesus, we see that he needed many fillings of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came and filled him according to um, Matthew 3.15. But we see other scriptures. We see at the time uh, of his temptation in the wilderness, the Holy Spirit, right after the Holy Spirit filled him, Jesus was tempted for 40 days in the wilderness. Satan hit him with everything he had, every temptation to try to get Jesus to turn from God. And by the time Jesus won the victory over Satan and Satan had to flee from him, the scripture says the angels of the Lord came and ministered to Jesus. He was tired. He was worn out. Virtue was pulled out of him. He needed a fresh new filling. And so he got a new anointing. The angels came and ministered to him and the Holy Ghost filled him. And we see that through the life of Jesus for the next three years, Jesus was so dependent on the Holy Spirit. Look at when he fed the 5,000. Look at when he walked on water. Look at when he calmed the storms. Look at when he walked through the crowds, when he taught the word, the Sermon on the Mount. You'll find that every time Jesus ministered, he went away to the mountains later to pray. Why did he go into the mountains to pray, ladies and gentlemen? He went to pray to his father to get his instructions, and he also went to get more power. You see, as Jesus ministered, power left him, virtue left him. When the woman with the issue of blood touched his garment, Jesus felt power leave him. And so Jesus knew that he would have to stay in the presence of his father to have the power to do what he was sent here to do. And Jesus, before he was crucified, he went on the Mount of Olives and he prayed, ladies and gentlemen. He prayed until uh, his sweat turned into blood. He said, Lord, if it be your will, take this cup from me. Uh, take this bitter cup from me. I don't, I don't want to uh, uh, face this bitter cup. But then he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And he was filled with the Holy Ghost. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit filled him so that he could be prepared to be arrested, to be beaten all night, to be beaten with many stripes. The scripture says he was wounded for our transgressions. Uh, he was bruised for our iniquities, and with his stripes we are healed. That's because he was filled with the Holy Spirit, and he, uh, as much as they beat him all night long, and he still had strength. The Holy Ghost gave him strength to carry his cross with the help of Simon of Cyrene, and they nailed him to the cross, and the Holy Spirit gave him strength to be nailed to the cross and to cry out from the cross, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And uh, to, to bless his mother while he was on the cross and to bless John and to bless the church. Ladies and gentlemen, this is because Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. And he, from time to time in his three years of ministry on earth, he went back to God in prayer and got filled again and again and again. And then at the end of his life on the cross, he had said, no man taketh my life. I lay it down freely. And if I lay it down, I will pick it up again. And on the cross, he breathed his last, uh, before he breathed his last breath, he said, Father, into thy hands, I commend my spirit. He said, Father, thank you. Thank you for the Holy Spirit for leading me. These have been three hard years, three long, hard years. And without you, Father, without you, Holy Spirit, it could not have been accomplished. But he said, it is finished. It is finished. Now into your hands, I commend my spirit. And he gave up the ghost. He gave up the Holy Ghost. He gave up the Holy Ghost back to God. He gave up the Holy Ghost back to God. Ladies and gentlemen, we see that Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they laid him in the grave, in the tomb. And then on the third day, on the third day, ladies and gentlemen, because Jesus had spoken his word and his word would not return unto him void. On the third day, God sent the Holy Spirit into the tomb, into the grave where Jesus was. 
and the Holy Spirit entered Jesus' body and filled him again, ladies and gentlemen, and filled him again, and filled him again. And Jesus, who was dead, got up from the dead. Death could not hold him. The grave could not keep him. And he rose from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus rose from the dead by the Holy Spirit. This same power, this same Holy Spirit is able to raise you up from your dead life, from your dull life, from sickness. This same spirit is able to heal you, deliver you, set you free. This same spirit can cause a revival in the church. We can flip the script in America and every nation. We can turn every nation upside down for Jesus if we trust God to be filled with the Holy Spirit because Jesus depended on the Holy Spirit. We ought to depend on the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I will send you the comforter. He will guide you into all truth. Ladies and gentlemen, without this power, we cannot do the will of God. That is why the church is so messed up today. That's why you have believers, uh, uh, people confessing Jesus but living in adultery, people confessing Jesus but still hooked on drugs, still hooked on opioids. We have people who confess Jesus but are still child molesters. They can't break themselves from their sins. Why? Because they have denied the power of the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, if we're going to do the will of God, we've got to be filled with the Holy Ghost. We've got to be humble enough to, to confess, God, I don't have the power. I need you, Holy Spirit. You've got to honor the Holy Spirit and worship him and say, Holy Spirit, come into me, baptize me, fill me. Ladies and gentlemen, Joel said, the prophet Joel, uh, 600 years before Jesus, he said, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. God spoke through Joel. In the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see vision. Your servants and upon your handmaids, I will pour out my spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the last days. The Holy Spirit wants to fill us. He's waiting. He's hovering. He's ho He's brooding. He's brooding over your house. He's brooding over your house. Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. The Holy Spirit wants to live in you. He wants to be the life in you. Paul wrote in uh, 2 Corinthians, he said, we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power is not of us. It is of God. Ladies and gentlemen, God wants you to get, get the power to go to your job and, and do your job even though you're persecuted. God wants you to be a good husband, a good wife, a good child. God wants you to uh, feed the sick, uh, minister to the minister to the sick and hungry. God wants you to do what he's called, he's called you to do. If he's called you to youth ministry, if he's called you to sing on the choir, if he's called you to build homes for the homeless, if he's called you to uh, uh, feed the hungry, whatever he's called you to do, you can do it, but you need power. You need strength. And ladies and gentlemen, we need this strength every day. And so we're going to believe God. We're going to believe God in the next few minutes, ladies and gentlemen. Your life is going to change. Your life is going to change. Pastor Carter can't change your life. I cannot do it, but God is going to change your life. I'm going to speak the word of God to you, and the Spirit of the Lord is going to come upon you and fill you. Ladies and gentlemen, Facebook family, in the next few minutes, uh, don't accept any phone calls. Turn the TV off. Don't let anybody, uh, don't open the door to anyone. Just stay right where you are. Stay in tune with Jesus. Uh, ladies and gentlemen on the website, stay in tune with Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, listening to this video and listening to the audio, stay right where you are and receive. Don't let Jesus pass you by. Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. 
while on others thou art calling. Do not pass me by. I know some of you have been waiting for the Holy Ghost baptism for a long time. You've been waiting. You've tried this and you've tried that. Well, this is your day. This is your day. We're going to receive by faith. Ladies and gentlemen, just as you receive Jesus Christ and the gift of salvation by faith today, you're going to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost by faith. You may say, well, I don't know if I want to pray in tongues. Ladies and gentlemen, the baptism of the Holy Ghost is not all about praying in tongues. Tongues is just one gift of the Spirit. Some of you will pray in tongues. Some of you will not. Some of you will get the gift of prophecy. Some will get the gifts of healing. You'll be able to go and lay hands on the sick and they are recover. Some of you will get the gift of helps. You'll be able to help the church to grow. Some of you will get the gift of administration. But the Holy Spirit, ladies and gentlemen, according to 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14, he gives gifts as he pleases. Your purpose is to receive. Trust the Holy Spirit. You've got to confess to God, God, I need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You've got to want this. And if you don't want it, you won't get it, ladies and gentlemen. You've got to want this. Blessed, blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be filled. You've got to mourn in your spirit because you know you need something else. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Jesus said, I will send the comforter to you. If you're mourning in your spirit, if you're without power, you want to, the power to do what God has called you to do. Then in the next few moments, hallelujah. We're believing God. God said he's going to do it. The spirit of God is going to breathe on you. And I'm asking you to receive by faith. Don't let anything interrupt you at this time. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Don't let anything interrupt you at this time. Believe God. Believe Jesus. Now, if Jesus was baptized with the Holy Spirit, and if Jesus had to go back to the mountains to pray for more power, to get filled again and again. He's told us that we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Every man has a measure of the Holy Spirit. Every believer has a measure, but God wants us to be filled. Ladies and gentlemen, it does not yet appear what we shall be. Get filled today. Now I'm going to ask you to pray with me. And then I'm going to pray a prayer of faith and God's going to release his spirit upon you. And when God releases his spirit upon you, we're going to start praising God. Just thanking God, praising God, wherever you are, praising God, just thanking God. Some of you will start singing to God. Some of you will start. Some of you will praise God. Some of you will just start speaking God's word. But you're going to get excited about God. You're just going to take some time out and magnify the Lord and thank God and bless him and bless the name of Jesus. And some of you may speak in an unknown language. You'll hear a language inside of you. And when you hear it, you start speaking that language. Uh, well, when, when we, do, we do, do this, we start praising God. I'll begin speaking in tongues and, 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 and help encourage you, those of you who receive the gift of tongues. Amen. And if you don't get the gift of tongues, you just keep on praising God because God knows what he wants. The most important thing right now is receive the Holy Spirit. Don't deny the Holy Spirit access to your life. Do not grieve him. Do not deny him today. This is your day. Even though you may not understand it all, this is your day. We walk by faith and not by sight. Now let's make this confession. Pray this prayer out loud with me. Pray this out loud with me. We're praying to God. Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. And I confess that Jesus Christ is my Savior and Lord. And I thank you for the gift of salvation. Now, Lord, I confess that I need the Holy Spirit to fill me. I confess that I need you, Holy Spirit. I repent for any time I have resisted you or quenched you or rebelled against you. Now, Holy Spirit, fill me. Fill me, Lord, with the Spirit of God. 
and I receive now by faith, by faith. In Jesus name, I thank you. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, you've prayed that prayer with me or a form of it. And now I'm going to pronounce what God has given me to pronounce. I'm going to speak God's word into your life, into your life. And the word says, and be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Ghost. And in the name of Jesus, as I lay my hands upon this, these computers, in the name of Jesus, receive the Holy Spirit. Andorobasi. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now just start, lift up your hands wherever you are and worship God. Give him praise. If you speak English, speak English. Praise him in your English tongue. If you speak Spanish, praise him in Spanish. If you speak French, praise him in French. Uh, just thank him and bless him and praise him and thank God. Just, just take time out. Don't try to figure anything out. Just Worship God. Worship. Tell him you love him. I love you, Lord God. I bless you, Lord God. Magnify you. I praise you. I exalt you. I thank you, Lord. Just worship Jesus right now, ladies and gentlemen. Worship Jesus. I bless you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Some of you may start crying. Some of you may sing. Some of you might get up and run in, in place. Some of you may jog in place. Some of you might just sit and wave your hands to the Lord. But this is your moment honor the Holy Spirit and receive him. Receive him. He is God. He's the third person of the Godhead. He's the Hagios Numa. He's the breath of God, the Spirit of God. He's the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. He wants to raise you. He's the same Spirit that Ezekiel saw in the valley of dry bones that uh, caused dry bones to connect and to become living beings. He's the one whom Jesus promised He's the one he promised. He said, tarry in Jerusalem until the promise comes. He's the one Jesus said, be filled with. So be filled. Just let him fill you. Breathe him in. Breathe him in and just fill him. And then just start praising God with your whole heart. Worship him. Sing to him. I love you, Lord. I bless you. I honor you praise and praise you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I have the victory. Glory to your name. Just worship him, ladies and gentlemen. Worship him. Your phones are muted. Nobody hears you. Just worship him. God hears you. Worship God where you are. Worship God. Stay focused on the Holy Spirit. Let him fill you. Let him fill you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I open my heart to you. I receive by faith. I receive by faith. And now some of you are going to hear uh, unknown language, a language you don't know in the in your heart of hearts. You're going to hear that language. Start speaking those words. Don't worry about what they mean, or what it sounds like. You're going to you'll make some sounds and some syllables. And this, that's speaking in tongues. And it starts with sounds and syllables. Eventually, you'll be able to put together sentences and phrases. And then eventually, you'll be able to get an interpretation from God. You'll learn how to sing in an unknown language to God. And that's the language of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has its own language. Everyone's language is different. The Holy Spirit wants to sing through your mouth unto God. And you've got to... Uh, practice letting him have his way just as you choose to speak french or ch speak german choose to speak in the holy ghost if you hear these words start speaking them speaking them out they're not going to force themselves out through your tongue you just speak them grande setoka yita kata koba ende sibi bobo yet do zebe de in grundera then you're going to start putting syllables together. Then you'll be able eventually to sing songs to the Lord. And those of you who don't uh, at, at yet have not received the prayer language, you just start telling, oh, God, I love you and I thank you. I thank you for saving me. I thank you for uh, taking good care of me. I thank you for healing me. I thank you, Lord God, that you raise yourself from the dead. I worship you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Tell him you need him. Tell him you love him. I love you, Lord God. I cannot make it without you. I praise you and I worship you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of salvation. Thank you for accepting me in the beloved. Thank you that I'm saved. 
Thank you that I'm no longer of this world. Thank you, Lord, for your mighty work. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for my home. Thank you for my family. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for blessing me. Praise God. You worship him, ladies and gentlemen. You worship him and don't stop worshiping him. Ladies and gentlemen, praise God. Lord, we thank you for the filling of your Holy Spirit. We recognize that you're in us, Lord God. Fill us. We release our faith unto you. We receive in the name of Jesus. We receive in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, fill the church all over the world. Fill the church. Pour out your spirit upon believers all over the world. Then help us to walk with you by faith. Fill us daily, God. Come alongside us, Holy Spirit, and help us to worship you. Help us to do the things you've called us to do. Help us to study your word, Lord God. Help us to study your word to be approved unto you. Help us to get back into our Bibles. Help us to walk by faith and not by sight. Oh, God, I love you and bless you and honor you. Oh, God, I thank you for the people you're healing right now. You're healing. Hallelujah. You're healing. Thank you. You're healing people of cancer. Healing people of heart trouble. Healing people who can't sleep. Oh, God, we praise you. We bless you. Healing people who've been crippled. Oh, God, you are the healer. Holy Spirit, we receive you. We acknowledge you. We bless you. We worship you. Honor you. We worship you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We bless you, Lord God. We bless you, Lord God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Well, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. This is Pastor Leroy Carter. You keep on praising God. You keep on praising God. Read your scripture. Get the video. Uh, get this video on my YouTube channel, Leroy Carter. Play it again and again and reinforce what you've learned today. Stay in the word of God. Amen. Praise God. Don't let Satan snatch or steal from you what you've got. Walk by faith and not by sight. Ask God to give you wisdom and understanding. Ask the Holy Spirit to take you and lead you and keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, bless God. Bless God. I'm going to sign off at this particular time. And I'm available uh, for those of you on my website. If you have any questions, I'll be here. Uh, I'm going to stop the, the, the video. But you can contact me or call me 404. Um, call me, call me at, at my number 404-205-1101 or send me an email, LeroyCarter69 at yahoo.com or hit me up on Facebook. I'll be glad to answer your questions. Praise God. Praise God. We don't ask for your money, but we want to answer your questions. We're here to help you to grow in the body of Christ. Well, praise God.